because you and I have spoken in the past about wanting one or two. Has that progressed at all? Yeah, as I, as I said, after the game and uh, on Tuesday when we beat Crew, that you know we're ever ever increasingly closer to, to signing a player. I think that player's been well identified without me naming him or his club. So we're we're hopeful that can go over the line today or this afternoon and and allowing us to be in our thought, allowing him to be in our thoughts and preparations for Saturday. More of a direct <clears throat> replacement for Rathbone. Has that moved at all? Yeah, very much so. Um, we're talking to that club now. I'm talking to their manager. It's just going to be a simple case of this boy will be, will be coming from a really good football club where they have good options, but this kid is, and he is young, but he's made such a, a really good impression last season, particularly this pre-season, that the determination will come down to whether they keep him in the door or not. We need we need one or two players, but we need it to be the right one or two, I think. We cannot go down the road of... For example, the player, the wide player we're talking about bringing in, my chairman has been aware of this boy for two and a half, three, four weeks. We've constantly discussed them in different situations within that deal happening. And that's the same with the midfield player. So our chairman and board are well aware of of the individual, or the two individuals that we're looking at, because there has to be a fallback. And we'll have to then allow great patience or keep great patience and see where they go. Might that happen before the weekend then or is that something that's a little longer in the in the pipeline i don't think it's going to happen to affect the team certainly the starting team for saturday i think if they're not in the building a couple of days and getting to know your players and your systems and how we play and what the expectations are i think that would be unlikely but you know literally you guys could leave here and paul douglas or rob scott could pick the phone up and say you know you've been given permission to get this deal happening and then the first port I called them would be would be me with the with the board with the chairman and Richard and um, get confirmation of, that we can move on this and then it would be the players. So I would say unlikely for for Saturday in that area of the pitch. Um, it, obviously, last Friday we were talking about Ollie Rathbone, weren't we? And, and his contract situation and ultimately moving has that maybe provided a fresh impetus for Haki Madoffin in his circumstances to get a closure, ideally signed, but if not move on no I think the situation was always going to be we go through the window we go through the uh, summer transfer window and then Rob and Paul Douglas and the powers to be speak we uh, in this case hacks and he's and his guys that look after him and that will still be the case you know he's a he's a kid who walks in here he wants to play here he wants to stay here he's never intimated in those to me all he did very early when my arrival said I want to move on hacks is only ever set up I want to be at Rotherham United so but I think the plan is to let's let's get the transfer window out. Let the, let the club of a uh, via Karen and, and Paul have a real hard look at the numbers and see where we are and, and what we can do. But he's he's certainly a player I would like to keep around. Um, on the uh, the injury front, uh, how are you looking ahead of the weekend? There were a few that were having little issues. There'll be a few players that's, that's subject to test tomorrow. Um, Sean Ragg will be subject to a test after a little. Twist on his knee as um, he should have scored, I think, when he put it away to the target. And uh, and very similar with Joe Rafferty and, and Joe Hongbo, they'll be they'll be tested this afternoon and can they rejoin the group to to train at 100 percent tomorrow. We're we've never been a management team that says you you come out and you do a light training session and you're fit to play because we don't play that way. So two or three players that, that will be subject to tests, but you know, if if we go without them we've got good players. That's why we have a squad and I think that was demonstrated on, on Tuesday with how good some of the boys performed. Um, as well as chance creation and not taking chances, one of the themes that's been discussed by well, lots of people since last weekend has been Jordan Hugill and, well, a balance problem. Does he need to pick his moments when he looks for free kicks? Um, no, I, th I think Jordan is a, Jordan's always been a handful. He's played against my teams. for I think he scored for Preston against Leeds when I was a Leeds manager. So he's, he's always been a... He's always been a handful, Jordan. Um, he's working incredibly hard. Um, we tried a particular way at Exeter. It, it, it clearly didn't work. So we have to find alternatives. But Jordan is, has got a big part to play here. You know, people people always want to knock people who they believe in their heads to be on lots and lots of money compared to everyone else. And it's not always the case, is it? What, what you sometimes hear in what fans' forums and fans' phone-ins uh, create and start stories that are not true. So... Jordan will just concentrate on his football and I'm sure he'll play many games and score a few goals for us and lots of goals that 
will help us have a good season. And what's a, the season I keep saying, Andy, is a season of transition for us. We're a work in progress. But the one overlying fact in all of that is we must never forget that we must win football matches during that process. There is no sets of fans in the world, whether you're, you're Rotherham United, diehard supporter, whether you're a Glasgow, Hilton, a Glasgow Celtic, the best club in the world, diehard supporter. Um, you have to then think that um, you want to make sure your players are given everything for the jersey. Mm. It's perhaps more the idea that when he's in a good place and you think there is an opportunity to progress <clears> here, he maybe thinks about taking a free kick first. Is that fair or unfair? I think it's unfair. I, I think some strikers are, in terms of target men, <clears> you know, do get um, battered around. Some referees give you protection. You know, let, let's talk about his, his straight partner from last week, Johnson Clark Hearts against Exeter. There's one point the boys had a strangulation hold. A strangulation hold of his nine street. There's four of them going in the fan. <laughs> you know, the, big, the blue lights are coming. And he doesn't even get a free kick. And, and the referee says afterwards, Clark Hearts can look after himself. You can't put someone in a stranglehold. So I think from that point of view, I think, you know, Jordan is has this labelled against him. I, 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 as his manager, I think it's unfair. Um, so, Bristol Rovers then uh, this weekend. As, as yeah, the developmental process at the start of the season, what what do you want to see from your team? Just, I think, the same, the same effort, the same passion, the same commitment, the same running stats that we produced against Crew because... You know, I don't need to tell our supporters that our running starts are 14, 50% up on Tuesday versus Saturday. Mm-hmm. But as I, as, I, as I made clear, I got the strategy and the system and the personnel wrong at Exeter. Sometimes your players in that situation will bail you out as the, as the manager or the head coach. I didn't get bailed out. They took it literally. So I can totally defend my players. They took it literally, but they also took it literally on Tuesday night. And let's be honest. Even the crew manager, who's a young man who have a lot of time for, sat in my office at the end of the game, said, could have been eight by half time. So we, we survived and went, went in front. So from our point of view, the same mannerisms and the same characteristics, we had a little bit more quality and a little bit more clinicalness in our finishing. Added to Tuesday, we'll be good. Uh, just finally then, Bristol Rovers, what's, what's your assessment of them at the, the start of the season? Well, they've seen some good players. That's the first thing you identify. They've never been shy in spending money down there. They've got a fantastic ownership model. Uh, they'll have a travelling fan base that's big, strong and passionate. But listen, this will be an early indication we are as Rotherham United, our first home league game. You know, the, the stadium will be will be busy. I hope that buzz about it. And uh, we'll be doing everything we can to win. But this is a this is a decent Bristol Rovers with high expectations team that's coming on Saturday. So we need to be ready. Steve oh. Jamie McCart, you, you've revived his career. Well, I don't uh, know if I've revived his career. He's certainly like, played like he hadn't done before. Is he, is he staying in the building now? You well, he's, he's, I, I've not had any phone calls on Jamie in the last two or three days to, to say the one. Um, her view is that I have to I have to judge every player, Paul, as I've said to you, when, I, when my own eyes and the staff's eyes and whatever it is. Jamie got, got fit at the back end of pre-season because he, he came with a little strain trying to get fit in the summer um, to come back in. But um, he's, got, he's, he's in performances have been very impressive. We put him straight in against Exeter, which people would have thought would happen. He stayed in on merit on Tuesday. And he was as good as in on the pitch on Tuesday. You know, he's um, naturally left side. He's big, strong, he's competitive. I'm not setting him up to be. He's still got things he has to work on, but we're delighted with him. So if, if Jimmy's in my group going through the window, uh, we'd, be, we'd be delighted.